Hello, this is Elizabeth, and I'm here with another of our Norse myths from the time of the Vikings. It was a time when wolves were common across northern Europe, and the Norsemen had good reason to fear them. And this fear is reflected in the legends about their gods, as you will hear. Loki looked like a god. He had the gifts of a god, and the mind of a god, but his heart was elsewhere. It was with the giants. For was he not a giant, at least in part by blood? And did he not have a home in Jotunheim, the cold, desolate and blasted land of the giants? I wouldn't have liked to have lived there, and I don't know anyone who would. But as for Loki, although he had in Asgard a lovely wife, Sigun, who was faithful to him to the end of days, in Jotunheim he had another family altogether. There his wife was a beastly giantess, and his children, oh, it is better not to think about them, but if you must, there was Hel, who turned people to stone. Only the gods were safe from her. The Midgard serpent, who was a horrible reptile, worse even than Fafnir the dragon, and who doubled in size every single day. And last, but not least, the cruel wolf Fenris, who was always hungry, and whose jaws were immense, and whose pointed teeth were as sharp as swords. Imagine keeping that lot in order at dinner. And these children of Loki's just kept on growing. One day, Odin was looking round the world with his eye. There was a lot to see. And although Odin was very wise, that was only after he had looked. As I said, Odin was looking round the world, and his eye fell upon Loki's home in Jotunheim and he saw Loki's terrible children. He saw how strong and powerful they were getting, and what dreadful trouble they would eventually cause. And he sent Thor and Tyr, and some of the other gods, to fetch them to Asgard. I would never have brought them to my home, but perhaps Odin wanted to keep his eye on them. However, this was not the reason... For Odin cast Hel down into the underworld. As the people there were dead anyway, he thought she couldn't do any more harm. He flung the Midgard serpent into the seas, where it stayed, growing ever bigger. And it was only the wolf, Fenris, that he kept in Asgard. Because if truth be known, he did not dare take him on directly. Fenris was a strange and difficult pet, there is no doubt about that. He roamed freely about Asgard, frightening the goddesses. He scared even Odin, for Odin knew that in the last battle it was his destiny to be destroyed by Fenris. One evening, some of the gods were too frightened to come to the council chamber, as it meant passing Fenris who was snapping his jaws in the doorway. Odin decided it was time to act. He opened up another passage into the chamber. When the gods had all come in, he closed the door. What a mistake we have made, he bemoaned, to feed and pamper this wolf, who is already our enemy, so he grows even stronger. No, we must find a solution. We cannot kill him, for we can have no bloodshed here. Chain him up, that's what I'd do, said Thor. Yes, but how? How will we find a chain strong enough to hold such a creature? Leave that to me, said Thor, always a god of action. That night... Thor worked away with his great hammer, and the other gods helped him. In the morning, 
all admired the thick chain with its complex links that gleamed in the sunshine. The strong are proud of their strength, said Odin. Of course, said Thor. What else would they be? Odin spread out the chain and put some meat high up in a tree. The gods called Fenris and asked him to show his wonderful strength by breaking the chain. Then you can have the meat, they promised. Fenris looked at the chain and sniffed the meat. The wolf knew how strong he was and that breaking the chain would not be a problem for him. So he agreed to be bound and his feet were tied together so it looked as if they were to stay like that always. But the god smiled too soon. The wolf flexed himself, snapped the vast chain and was free once more. Reluctantly, Odin nodded and Tyr gave Fenris the meat. The wolf sloped off. He has grown terribly strong, said Odin looking at the chain and pieces on the ground. You'll have to make a stronger chain. Again, Thor stayed up all night, hammering away to make a new and stronger chain to bind the wolf. All the gods wished him good luck and prayed for his success. And in the morning, they did think that the chain he had made looked stronger. But was it... Again, Tyr called the wolf over. You astonished us yesterday, but if you can break this chain, you will win eternal honour and your strength will be known throughout the world and throughout the heavens. Where's the meat? said Fenris. Oh, we will give you the meat later, came the furtive reply. Fenris looked at the gods and saw the fear in their eyes. His evil heart told him they would be even more afraid if he snapped this chain too, and he knew that he could. He agreed to be bound. The gods made sure the chain was fastened tight around him. Get the meat, said Tyr. Fenris waited till the meat was near, and then he strained the chain. He pulled and he pulled and the gods became hopeful. But snap! It too burst apart. The gods stared at it in silence while Fenris gobbled his meat and slinked away. The gods looked at Odin. Something else had to be done to curb this monster against them. We will have to ask the dwarves to help us, said Odin, to make a chain so strong that Fenris will be unable to break it, but so light in appearance that he will agree to be bound by it. I will send a messenger to tell them of our desperate need. The dwarves have ever been our friends in times of danger. A messenger was sent, and soon he was in the underground home of the dwarves. It was very dark. Numerous lanterns lit the caves, and the stalactites and stalagmites. In fact, it looked quite pretty. Some dwarves ran about with yet more lights. Some puffed bellows to heat the fires of the great forge, while others worked a different shift and were resting on toadstools, chatting. The leaders of the dwarves conferred together. We will make you an enchanted chain, they said. They were a friendly lot and set to work at once. It took a long time, for there is much work in making a chain and even more in making enchantments. At last, the dwarves proudly handed over their work. It is magic, they said. What is bound with this will remain bound until the end of days. The god's messenger bowed low. 
the gods will not forget their debt to the dwarves, and will gladly thank you, and help you if you are in need. And he flew back to Asgard. When they saw it, the gods were not impressed. At first glance, it didn't seem like a chain at all, just a soft and silken string. Then, one by one, the gods tried to break it. None could, not even Thor. Odin smiled for the first time in a long while. The time has come to ask Fenris to try it, he said, and he called him. We know how strong you are, Odin said to the wolf. You have shown us this twice, but now we have a further test for you. He held out the twisted strand to Fenris. It is this. The wolf looked at the silken string and paused. He was not stupid. Why should I? he asked. If I succeed, no one will think anything of it. And if I fail, I remain bound. Odin smiled at him. How could you fail with your strength? I fear a trick, said Fenris. If it is a trick, you will not help me. But you shall not call me coward. You may bind me if one of you will place his right hand in my mouth. The gods looked at each other, but they did not smile. There was a silence. Thor moved as if to volunteer, but Odin stayed him. No, he said. Thor and his hammer could not be risked. Then Tyr, always brave and courageous, stepped forward. Fenris opened his huge jaws and Tyr put his hand in the wolf's horrible mouth. The gods bound the whole length of the silken strand tightly around Fenris and tied the ends together with the best knots they knew. They had a double worry, that the strand would not hold, and if it did, that Tyr would lose his hand. Fenris thought this himself, and began his struggle to break free. But the harder he tried, the tighter he was bound. Fenris jumped, stretched, and strained with all his strength, but he could not break the strand. Then, filled with fury at the trickery of the gods, he foamed at the mouth and bit off Tyr's hand. Even Tyr, brave as he was, let out a terrible cry. The goddesses led him away to bind his handless arm. Prepare a rock, Thor, said Odin. Choose a rock deep-rooted in the earth and on an island. Bore a hole in it. Take Fenris to the island. Thread the strand through the hole and knot it well. Our lives and the lives of men depend on it. And so it was that the wolf Fenris was bound and made fast to a rock. His jaws spread apart, foaming and growling until the end of days. And that was the story of Fenris the Wolf, adapted for Story Nori by Charlotte Seabag Montefiore. I do hope you enjoyed it, and you might like to know that Charlotte has also written some verses which tell tales from the Old Testament. They're called Rhyming Bible Stories, and they're available from Amazon for Kindle, and will soon be in paperback too. They're published by Story Nori. For now, from me, Elizabeth, bye!